good shot. Oh! Oh! The difference with Duplicy is he was signed to another organizer. Oh! 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 Just kind of poking at him with that jab. Oh! When someone fights at the highest level of competition and has a resume with 20 victories, 19 of which are won by brutal stoppages, that's the same kind of warning as the one they put on packages of cigarettes. Smoking can kill you. Minute three seconds from any of this! Could be one of the biggest upsets ever! Yeah. for Duplessis. Oh, he's out. Dracus Duplessis is the new elite force in the UFC's middleweight division. Duplessis, he was signed to another organizer. Oh! oh. Scoring cemetery knockouts that leave the opponents knocked out dead. Oh, big right hand gets through for Duplessis. Oh. And tight submissions that only give them the options to tap, nap, or snap. Du Plessis was born and raised in Pretoria, South Africa. He was initially introduced to martial arts through judo at the age of five, but throwing and slamming kids to the ground was not satisfying his appetite enough, so he switched to kickboxing at 14. Despite the early success, This is going to work very well. We've not seen any of could be in, and he's toppled it. That For fighting someone like and becoming a WAKO world champion in K1-style kickboxing. The South African realized that this sport would not pay his bills, making him migrate his focus to mixed martial arts. Dreykus attended the University of Pretoria to study agricultural economics, but eventually became a college dropout to pursue his MMA career. With this move, he could entirely focus on this sport and develop himself into the killer he later became. In 2013, Dreykus Duplessis made his MMA debut in the local EFC Africa organization. The South African ran through his first four opponents like a tank over a car. Can he stop it? He can't. Dreykus has got a hold of his neck, right? Scoring two submissions. Second from Eddie, and he gets the victory! It's a bad spot for Daniel to be in. This could be one of the biggest upsets. And two knockout victories. indicating he is not here to play around. However, in his fifth professional bout, Duplessis was matched against Gareth McLellan, a karate and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and future UFC veteran. By receiving his first professional loss, Dracus learned that there are levels to this game and to succeed in the sport, he must constantly grow and develop as a fighter. Like a Cheyenne warrior, he returned better than ever, finishing his next three opponents via rear naked choke. This could be one of the biggest upsets in all his world. He's a champion. In a span of a year before he was matched against Martin Van Staden, a knockout artist not fond of leaving it to the judges' hands. He started and the big shot. He backs out. Get to the kick. Oh, Jamie Smith is knocked out. After receiving heavy ground and pound shots in the third, match between these two, and then, can he, he stop the it? He can't stop. Van Staden tried to escape that position. Oh, he over. That's tough. Falling right into Dracus's trap. He's got the doors locked up. It seems like he does. As his world was going dark due to the deep guillotine, and it seemed that Martin would probably go to sleep, he remembered it was not bedtime yet and tapped. Just to flip him over, which he's trying to do now allowing Duplessis to claim his first EFC welterweight title. Three seconds from Eddie, and he gets the victory. Considering that he achieved his goal in welterweight, Duplessis decided to move to middleweight and make this division his new home. By winning his next two fights in this division, the South African earned his spot at the EFC middleweight title shot against the English powerhouse Yannick Bahadi. A fighter whose knockout power even exceeds his intimidating look. Now Bahadi, big takedown. After exchanging some shots on the feet, Yannick got this brilliant idea to shoot for a single leg takedown against a guy whose squeeze is as powerful as a boa constrictor suffocating its prey. Dreykus sunk his guillotine choke deep and, after adjusting it properly from a dominant position, the English fighter had the option to tap or nap. 
Dracus Duplessis was now the EFC middleweight champion. Which would turn out to be an overture to his next big career move. His talent was noticed abroad by the Polish KSW organization, which made him an offer he couldn't refuse. On April 14, 2018, they graded Dreykus an immediate title shot against their own champion, Roberto Soltic. A former boxer in a knockout machine with five belts and five different European MMA promotions on his resume. <laughs> After receiving some bombs, fighters and no lack of power. the South African state composed by displaying good defensive skills. Just needs to keep cool. Before utilizing his superior grappling to neutralize Roberto's power on the feet. He's rocked him. Down goes! Duplessis ended the first round in a dominant position, but learned the danger of keeping the fight standing against an elite boxer like Soldic. As the second round went on, when everybody thought Dreykus would use his grappling credentials to his advantage, the South African landed a picture-perfect left hook. Solich again, looking for that left. Oh, he got right. That dropped the champion instantly after delivering a few super necessary bombs. Goes the champion with a big shot. That came from The referee was forced to wave the fight off. That came from nowhere. Duplessis in there. It's all over. The vicious left hook that would make even Alex Pereira proud earned Duplessis his most significant career title as he became the KSW welterweight champion of the world. The two were eventually scheduled for a rematch during the same calendar year, and the Croatian was determined to prove that his last performance should not define him as a fighter. Instead of utilizing his grappling early on, where Dracus would have clearly had the advantage, he decided to stand and bang with the boxer to keep cruise control, but left, right, left the man has a chin like granite, but he takes punishment. After two rounds of back and forth action, Soldic got the advantage and worked it. Soldic gained momentum in the third. Ultimately leading to Dreykus's second career loss. And Dreykus to bless it. Well, after such a game, game outing last the 24-year-old South African learned from his mistakes and fixed his flaws to become an elite competitor at the top of the MMA food chain. He developed a balanced style of mixing his striking with wrestling. We saw that in the Martin McStodden. Which will turn out to be a tricky puzzle to solve, even for the UFC Royals, about whom we will talk later. As the first stepping stone on his road to redemption, Still Knox faced Jordan Santos, a very dangerous finisher with over 30 bouts on his resume up to that point. This time, Dreykus' grappling played a significant role in this fight. Really powered forward. Slipped his leg in As he glued himself to Joyatin's body and battered his head till the referee told him not to. Here now, Duplessis piling in the pressure. That's it, it's all Duplessis quickly returned to Africa next, just to remind everyone who is the king of the savanna as he defended and unified the EFC middleweight championship against Brendan Lesser. There's a lot left because the being 14-2 and two at that time and finishing every opponent he squared off against was enough to make Dreykus' name appear on the UFC's radar. While the world was battling the pandemic in 2020, the South African signed with the UFC to explore uncharted waters and show everyone that he is an elite competitor who can compete against the best. Duplessis made his UFC debut happy and proud to represent South Africa. When it comes to anything where South Africa is represented, it's something that I take very seriously. It's something that I wear on my shoulder. My people, the heritage, my family, and the values that was installed. It's something that I'm extremely proud of. The road to success for Dreykus was anything but easy. For the first fight, he was matched against Marcus Perez, a Muay Thai specialist and a former LFA champion. Tell you why, huh? this guy's got good tech. Could have been awkward start stop oh. there. Big right hand shots on the end. As exciting as always, that's nice right hand there from Duke. The South African did not want to leave it to the judges' hands. Third round, I never felt that. Much. And with a short left hook, he was signed to another organizer. Oh! He sent Perez to the canvas, followed by heavy ground and pound shots. Oh! 
making that Tong Po hairstyle collect the dust from the canvas. A statement was made. Dreykus Duplessis put the whole division on notice as he needed only a round to close the show in his UFC debut. In order to see if Still Knox is the real deal, the UFC matchmaker scheduled him against Trevin Giles next, a UFC veteran with notable victories over Brendan Allen, James Krause, and Roman Dolice. Although both fighters started that bout cautiously. When he tries to force a big engagement, he kind of gets a big record. Oh! Dreykus utilized his wrestling in the closing minutes of the first. Nice entry here. Trevin's got his arm wrapped up. Oh, he's always going for the loss. Finishing the round in a dominant position. Trevin did a good job of going back to his back. Up easy. But then, in the second, the American backed Duplessis against the cage, delivering shots to his guard overconfidently. Pulls up towards your head. Oh, there we go. As he absorbed the punches, Dreykus retaliated with a beautiful one two combo. Good shot. Good shot. Oh! that dropped Giles instantly, who the referee saved from leaving the arena on a stretcher. With this outstanding victory, not only did Still Knox put South Africa's name on the map, but he also earned his first performance of the night bonus. In his next bout, the rising contender was scheduled to face Brad Tavares, a UFC veteran with a solid record of 19-6 up to that point, who has fought in the organization ever since 2010. After losing the first round due to a mistake, the South African gained momentum in the second with a vicious knee. Oh, big shot by That was an overture to a repetitive hammering of Brad's head. Watch your head to Brad. It was apparent that Duplessis made some adjustments and switched to his striking to neutralize the opponent's game. Good. Heavy. Oh. Sure enough, that round was a one-sided pounding. Good left hook there by Tavares. And Dreykus was the one swinging the hammer. Coming in. Oh! oh he he the, right round. the third round was not any different as Duplessis took over where he left off, tagging Brad with strikes. There it is. Oh! Loading up. Oh! oh. A lot of blood. By, I mean, a lot of blood. The South African won that fight unanimously, and Tavares was marked as the first fighter who fought Duplessis and survived to hear the final bell. By the end of the year, Dreykus was supposed to face arguably the most formidable challenger in his career up to that point, Darren Till. A former title challenger with superior striking credentials. Versus oh! For some, Till had been training on his wrestling with his new buddy, Khamzat Chimaev, and everybody was eager to see this new 2.0 version of the Englishman. The moment the fight started, Duplessis wasted no time and immediately shot for a takedown. Look at this, takedown! Testing how much Till had learned from his time with Chimaev. However, he executed a takedown without real resistance and battered his head for the whole first round. Till wasting energy trying to give him the thumbs up. Than he was before. He Although the second round was more competitive, but he really tried to stop Darren Till in that. Oh, oh my goodness. And Till had his moment. Oh, Dreykus's grappling superiority was apparent. Darren Till. But Till stopped. As he took the Englishman down at will, dealing accumulative damage throughout the round. From Duplessis. Finally, in the third, after executing a takedown and securing a dominant position, Still Knox squeezed Till's face as if trying to take it home with him, forcing the Englishman to surrender. Of and Besides earning a Fight of the Night bonus award by beating a name with star power like Darren Till, Duplessis slowly but surely started to launch his name to the top of the division and gain some deserved popularity. Duplessis finally earned a shot at a highly ranked opponent as he was matched against Derek Brunson next, one of the best wrestlers in the division, with significant victories over fighters like Uriah Hall. 
Lyoto Machida, He's it's over. and Kevin Holland. Still not there yet. Right, he's gonna land the right hand. In a dogfight where both fighters exchanged high-level wrestling reversal. It was evident from the first round that this fight would not reach the final bell. Yes, even Adesanya on his ascent. Considering the fast pace they implemented early on. By the end of the second, after repeatedly tagging Brunson's face with shots, oh, but you can see, doesn't it? the American was overwhelmingly tired and could barely stay on his feet. Oh. Dreykus capitalized on the moment and landed a few clean shots that dropped the American down. Oh. 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 Big right hand gets through for Duke. Duplessis followed him and started to bounce Brunson's head off the canvas like a pinball machine. Forcing his corner to throw the towel for the rescue, allowing their fighter to fight another day. On July 8, 2023, Still Knox was scheduled to face Robert Whitaker, the former champion and a top contender for years. Whitaker is the man. If it weren't for Israel Adesanya, he would have ruled this division for years, considering that he beat almost all top contenders that were climbing to the top. We are talking about an elite striker. And grappler. A BJJ and karate black belt, who has been at the top of the UFC's food chain since 2015. Considering how good Whitaker is, everyone thought that he would simply run over Duplessis easily and earn his next shot at the title. However, after executing a beautiful takedown in the first round, Robert Whitaker, he recognizes and understands. And hammering Robert's head with bombs, Great job. Oh, big help. Dracus showed that he is a force not to be reckoned with that must not be underestimated. And then in the second, when everyone thought that Robert would regain and pick the South African apart, Duplessis landed a picture-perfect jab oh, that stumbled the Australian, making him look like a drunk man trying to exit the door. Dracus knew he must capitalize on the moment, and he went after Robert as a man possessed. Hitting him with everything he had, making him regret not taking a helmet to this fight. After delivering multiple unanswered shots, the referee was forced to wave the fight off. The challenge to the reigning champion had been launched. After beating the former middleweight belt holder and receiving worldwide congratulations from a former U.S. president. The South African squared off in the octagon with Israel Adesanya. You certainly did, sir, and that earns you a spot at the very top of the mountain. And the man you will face next is standing to your right, the great Israel Adesanya. The UFC world wonders who will win in the clash between the two fighters. The black African raised in New Zealand or the white African born and raised in South Africa. Oh! The difference with Duplessis is he was signed to another organization. Oh! Oh! Good shot. Oh! Just kind of poking at him with that jab. Dreykus Duplessis is the new rising prospect in the UFC middleweight division, taking the organization by storm. His exciting fighting style and the ability to end the fights before the final bell earned him a reputation as an ultimate finisher who can potentially be the next UFC champion. And what do you guys think? Do you believe Dreykus possesses what it takes to become the UFC champion? How do you think a fight between him and Adesanya would go? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and if you would like to watch more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel.